Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, this is going to be a fun experience for us and hopefully for you as well. Uh, I'm going to talk about the first piece you're going to hear, which is uh, Opus 3 for Beethoven's Piano Trio. Um, as he was coming out of Bonn, uh, he received a communication from Haydn, and of course it was kind of all of Western Europe was in an uproar because Mozart had recently passed. And so uh, Haydn and Beethoven were in contact with each other, and Haydn said, now's your time to come to Vienna and kind of take it over. And so he decided to move to Vienna and obviously established himself well there. One of the first few pieces that he uh, wanted to have out in the public sphere were the three piano trios. And uh, Haydn was very uh, vocally critical of this third one, saying that there was no audience in Vienna that was ready for the depth that this piece possessed and that he should wait until many years later. And Beethoven didn't, of course, care for that so much, and so he uh, refused to call Haydn his teacher for about a year or so until they, they made it up. Uh, but this is uh, one of the first pieces that he wrote in C minor. Uh, many other pieces ended up being very special to us as listeners that are in C minor, things like the Pathetique Sonata and the um, uh, Symphony No. 5 and many other pieces of great depth that he wrote were in C minor. So this is the first piece of the afternoon, and this is the Opus 1, No. 3, Piano Trio by Beethoven. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. Um, our next piece is the second piano trio by Shostakovich in E minor. Um, much of Shostakovich's music combines his personal life and the political life. Um, the second trio is no exception to that. Um, he wrote this trio in memory of his friend Ivan Solartinsky, who passed away very suddenly of a heart attack in 1944. And at the same time, Allied forces um, were discovering the atrocities of the Nazi um, concentration camps as the Nazis were retreating. Um, they, you know, Treblinka was one of the ones that they found. And this piece evokes uh, many of those feelings that Shostakovich was having at the time surrounding the political nature of World War II um, and the, the death of his friend. The, the piece opens with this really interesting juxtaposition of registers on the instrument. You, you often think of the piano as sort of a balance between violin and cello, with cello feeling more like the bottom end of things and the violin and the upper registers with the melody like you were hearing a lot of in the Beethoven. Um, instead, he opens this piece with cello on artificial harmonics, pushing the, the very upper registers of the instrument, while the violin comes in later with this canon theme um, at the bottom end of its register, and he continues that with piano at its very far left extreme as well. Um, at the end of our canon, we, we go into the moderato section um, where the piano takes over, and then the movement from there continues to move between these moments of, of happiness, quiet reflection, and then bouts of really angry outbursts. Um, the second movement takes us into this really frenzied kind of dance, that never quite seems to settle down and you always think is gonna veer out of control. The third movement starts with a piano, Bach-like chorale, all these open chords that accompanies this really beautiful, dark, and haunting melody between um, violin and cello. It's an elegy that very much directly reflects the, the emotional um, things going on in his life with the death of his friend. Um, the fourth movement, again starts to draw inspiration from the war and especially the, the idea of the death camps that the Allied forces were finding. Um, Shostakovich himself was really horrified to, to hear about the, the atrocities being committed at the death camps. Um, more specifically, he was hearing the stories of the SS guards that would make the Jewish prisoners um, dig these mass graves and then would make them dance beside them before finally shooting them and killing them. Um, so he, he includes this sort of Jewish-like dance theme, um, and it's one that if you're familiar with the eighth string quartet, it comes back in there. Um, and then he ties the movement together at the end, bringing all of his personal feelings and the political feelings together, the feelings of the unknown of World War II and where things were headed in the world um, by bringing back the thematic elements from the first movement, and then at the very end are chords and the piano um, from the third movement.
hard for us to breathe during some of that, so thank you for bearing with us, and we're going to catch our breath, and our, our, our last piece is called Appala Appalachia Waltz by the fiddler Mark O'Connor. He composed this in 1993 when he was visiting the desert of New Mexico, and he was searching for inspiration to write something else, and this tune came into his head. Uh, he later showed it to the great cellist Yo-Yo Ma, and the two of them, along with the bassist Edgar Meyer, have performed and recorded this extensively. Uh, O'Connor said, if I play the waltz for any fiddle player, he'll say it sounds classical. If I play it for any classical player, he'll say it sounds like a fiddle tune. And he continues by saying that Appalachia Waltz is a modern day spiritual. It conveys both optimism and longing, a belief in the future, and a closeness for old homes, old friends, and past journeys. Uh, I, I would like to add to that uh, what Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. This is a beautiful song, and I hope that you can capture the, the yearning uh, for something else that this conveys.
asked if we had any plugs, and I've got a big one. I'm so grateful for these two young men here and what they do with the young people uh, and what they're doing with them. Thank you all. November 22nd, that's a Sunday, two weeks from today, we're going to have a big outdoor concert in the parking lot with all the sunshine that hopefully will be coming that way. That is at 5 p.m., two weeks from today. Thank you very much for coming out and braving the uh, tropical storm to hear some music. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's a very special place, very special community with extraordinary people. Thank you very much for being here, and see you soon.